In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you ever come across a gospel passage, and it's a beautiful story, it has a beautiful meaning, but does it really apply to me? And we see a multitude of stories in the gospels that may pertain to that. Today's a case in point, the story of the rich young man. Now, at first glance, we can see it in two ways. One is, well, I'm neither the Lord nor the lady of the manor. I do not own rich properties in, all over the place. How does this apply to me, this rich young man? I'm not exactly rich. In other words, when Jesus says, sell all you have and give to the poor, wait a minute, Lord. I have to provide for my family. I have to have a roof over my head. I have to provide for my basic needs. How can I just unload everything, give to the poor? What am I going to do, Lord? Is this practical? And in the eyes of the world, it's anything but practical. So how do we approach this gospel? One way is to see the rich young man. He's not like the others who are coming to the Lord trying to test him and kind of throw him off kilter or embarrass him. No, this young man is very sincere. He really wants to know, how can I gain eternal life? How can I, how can I live the right way, a godly way? This is really a genuine plea from this man to the Lord. And so the Lord says, well, follow the commandments. That's a way to do it. And the Lord kind of describes the various commandments. And the young man says, yes, I'm doing all those things. Well, there's one thing more that you need to do. And that is, Sell all your possessions and give all of that to the poor. It is said in the Gospels that the man is crestfallen. He's saddened. You know, he's not just saying, I'm out of here. This Lord is just imposing too much stuff on me. <clears throat> he leaves sad. He leaves droopy as he walks away from the Lord. He feels perhaps defeated. And our Lord is not a hard-hearted man, mm -hmm. obviously. He's a loving God man. And so he looks upon this man with great compassion in his weakness and in his powerlessness to let go of his things that are possessing him. It all comes down to freedom, doesn't it? The Lord is not calling him to some impossible task. He's calling him to be free, not to be stuck in the stuff that we may be so attached to that we can't let go, and because we can't let go, it's getting in the way of our relationship with the Lord, and because of that, we're not living really free, even though on the outside, it may be that we're living it up, but we're not. But does this gospel really just talk about possessions like money and property? I think it goes way beyond that too. Okay, it may involve that, of course, but it also involves the other possessions that we hold on to, attitudes, grudges, habits, Outlook on life, things that we may be holding on to because this is our security, but we know that it's not giving me anything but slavery. And so today becomes kind of an opportunity through this gospel. And remember one thing too, in the gospel of Luke, remember, the Lord says, unless you hate mother, father, brother and sister, your very self, you can't be my follower. What is he saying? Obviously, he's not saying literally hate these people and not love them and be with them. No, of course not. But what he is saying to us is in everything, we have to put the Lord Jesus first in our life. First. 
When we follow the kingdom of God, everything else will be given to you, right? That's what the Lord says. Enter the kingdom, and everything will be provided for you. What is the Lord saying? Putting me first makes my love that you are giving all to me, that very love that will now go down to the people that you love. Father, mother, brother, sister, relatives, friends, whoever that may be. The love that I have for these people who we care about and cherish, that we're not possessing obviously, but who we're loving, all that love that we're sharing with them is coming from the Lord himself, flowing through us onto the people that we love. That's how it works. And because of that, our weakness becomes our strength. And so our seeming powerless to let go, remember the Lord says, nothing, 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 nothing is impossible with God. And so even in our seeming powerlessness to let go of things that are making us slaves, whatever that may be, the Lord is there to help us in our powerlessness to give us whatever we need to be free. And that's what our Lord wants us to be, to be free. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. That is freedom, brothers and sisters. And so today, as we examine our conscience, you know, Lord, how do I stand with you? How important are you in my life? When I wake up in the morning, are you the one who's going to guide me and direct me in, thought, in all my thoughts and feelings? Are you going to guide my words and actions today? Just for today. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. It can be just for today. And then the next day, just for today. It becomes then a relationship with the Lord. So our prayer becomes alive because it's all about relationship. It's all about, Lord, I'm putting you first. Not at the exclusion of everyone else around me. Not at the exclusion of all the responsibilities that I'm on for. No. But I'm putting you first because you are my life. And in you I find life. As the Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If we truly believe that, then we will truly be free. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind always, now and ever, and on to the ages of ages.